Janice, did you see this? See what? There's a guy in camouflage doing karate across the street. If he was in camouflage, how would I see him? Well, you should come take a look. Well, who is he? Well, I don't know. You should go over there. Why me? You're the man. Well, I'm a smart man who knows not to approach strangers practicing karate. That's Tank. How do you know? That's what he said. You talked to him? Sure. He asked me if I was a kid or a little person. You shouldn't talk to strangers, Zach. He's not a stranger. He lives there. What happened to Mrs. Harrison? She's still there. Tank's her son. You should go over there and meet him. I don't want to meet him. Sean, you have no friends. You're my friend. I'm your wife. See? Remember our wedding vows? You promised to be my best friend forever. Come on. I'll make a pie. A good idea. Well, I'll run him off. Very funny. Morris, you must see this. What is it now? There's a soldier doing the martial arts. So? So? Did you forget our mission? We are spies for Soviet Union. Svetlana, I've told you a thousand times the Cold War is over. There's no more Soviet Union. Yet. This is just American propaganda. Sergei would have told us if this happened. Sergei hasn't talked to us since 1986. You know nothing about sleeper cells. We observe, and we wait to be activated. Which will never happen. Quiet! I must write this down. Fatality! Gotta stay sharp and ready, man. Feel the burn. Hi, we're the Perkins from across the street. You already met our son, Zach. I'm Sean, and this is my wife, Janice. What's that thing? This? You, you never seen a Geiger counter before? No. I, uh, made you a pie. Were any shellfish used in the making of this pie? No. It's cherry. Because I can't have shellfish. Allergies? No, they just dump too many harmful chemicals in the ocean, so I never have any fish or vegetables. You don't eat vegetables. Of course not. The government spends billions of dollars genetically altering our vegetables. That's why the scientists want people to eat them. So what do you eat? MREs, mainly. MREs? Yes, meals ready to eat. That's what the Army eats when they're out on a mission. You worried about the government putting stuff in our vegetables? Yeah, you eat the stuff the government gives to the Army? Don't be silly. I get them from Amazon. Doc, I got the pie. Quick, Marty, don't let them see you. Now let me ask you guys something. How come neither you were at work today? Friday is a standard work day, at least for normal people. I'm a writer. A writer? What do you write? Tech manuals. What kind of tech do you write about? Are you a drone guy? Or do you design those chips to put in people so you can track their every move? No, I write instruction manuals for computer components. Sounds boring. Oh, it is. I have an online store that sells arts and crafts. What do you do? Well, I was in the army, but now I stand ready and getting prepared. Prepared for what? You never know. That's why you have to be ready. Well, we're sorry to interrupt your karate. It's called Tank Kwon Do. What? Karate is for losers. I do a special form of martial arts that I created called Tank Kwon Do. Combines resilient jujitsu, Tibetan yoga, and special moves from Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat? Video game. Huge influence on me. Oh, hey, I almost forgot to ask, how's your mom doing? She's hanging in there. The chemtrails got her. The what? The chemtrails! 
Wasn't she on Sex in the City? No, that's Kim. Could I mean I I don't know. I never seen it. Yeah, uh, me neither. Well, we better get going. My brother is coming over to stay with us, and we have to get the house ready. He's only staying two days. Your brother? Is he cool? No, not at all. Yes, he's cool. He's my brother. What does he do? Absolutely nothing. He's an inventor. He's always coming up with something new. Something stupid. Yeah, we better get going. What an idiot. You're just jealous. What? That's ridiculous. You're threatened by him. No, I'm not. I'm not. Janice, seriously, he learned his moves from Mortal Kombat. You're jealous. No, I just got all my moves from Street Fighter. All of them, huh? Hot Doken. Where's your brother? You know, Tommy, he just shows up whenever he feels like it. Oh, believe me, I know. Two days, Janice. I'm serious. Tommy's only staying for two days. I know. I'm serious this time. Uncle Tommy! Hiya, kid. Hey, guys. Thanks for letting me crash here. I'm between places right now. Aren't you always? So is it cool if I surf the couch here for a few months? Of course. Your family. What? Yay! Unbelievable. Doc, I got the bong! Water pipe, Marty! It's a water pipe! Hey, uh, where's Janice? I don't know. She went shopping or something. I wasn't listening. Hey, wanna see my new invention? Is it better than that pedal-powered wheelchair? Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking, man. People who need wheelchairs can't pedal. Yeah, you think? You know, Thomas Edison had thousands of inventions that failed before he found one that worked. That's what all the failures say. Well, this one's not going to fail. Okay. What you got? You invented flour? It's powdered water, man. Powdered water? And what do you add to the powder to make water? Well, this is just a prototype. It doesn't work yet. But as soon as I discover the right formula, one drop of water will turn into several gallons, man. I have no idea why you're sleeping on my couch. So, um, hey, you're Tang, right? Yeah, what's it to you? Well, I was just watching you from across the street. My name's Tommy. I'm standing across the street with Janice and Sean. I'm Zach's uncle. Uh, that's cool, cool. Just want to say I really like your moves, man. Oh, thanks. Years of practice and dedication. Janice was telling me that you're some sort of survival expert or something. I'm not just some sort of survival expert. I am THE survival expert. I was in special, special forces. It's like the special forces, only more special. But that's all hush-hush stuff. I'm not supposed to talk about it. Wow, that's cool. I don't know anything about that, but I do know how to invent stuff. Oh yeah? An inventor might be a good guy to have around when the alien apocalypse happens. People won't be able to just run to the store to buy stuff. Someone who can invent things will be able to keep us alive. What have you invented lately? Well, I did invent a pedal-powered wheelchair, but that was a dumb idea. 
No way, that's genius, man. Picture this, you're a CIA operative. Your cover is a disabled guy in a wheelchair, but somehow your cover gets blown and you had to get out of there fast. With your invention, boom, you can just pedal your way to safety. I bet the military industrial complex would be very interested in something like that. Well, I never thought of it like that. Hey, if you could teach me your fighting moves, I could share my inventions with you. Sounds like a good deal to me, brother. Okay, follow my moves. First, we need to limber up. I call this one the volleyball. First, we set it up. Then we spike it. Boris, you must see this. What is it now, Svetlana? The soldiers. Now there are two of them preparing for battle. Maybe a new base opened up. Yet. We would have known if they were opening a new base. They are preparing for war. War? What war? With Soviet Union! Did you forget our mission? Svetlana, I told you, the Cold War is over. Yet, Boris. We must learn more. We have to get closer. Oh, brother. I call this one the golf swing. Four. Four. Did you learn these moves in the army? No, they only teach basic karate. I'm self-taught the inventor of Taekwondo. Oh, so you're an inventor too? Yeah. Sean doesn't like my inventions. Your brother doesn't know anything. Brother-in-law. Right, sorry. He's going to be the first one to die in the alien zombie invasion. Yeah. Wait, what? The alien zombies. Oh yeah, I've heard of them. You know, we should invent something to fight off the alien zombies. Like what? I don't know. Hey, how about a nuclear ray gun? Yeah, I think I can make one of those. Yeah, we can get Sean to finance it since he's not good for anything else. Let's go tell him. You want what? We just want a small investment so we can create our invention. Yeah, all we need is enough money for the plutonium, dude. The what? The plutonium for our alien death ray gun. To fight off the zombie aliens. I thought they were alien zombies. We won't know until we get there. Oh yeah, I forgot. You guys are crazy. I'm going to invent a nuclear ray gun. That'll show you who's crazy. Yeah, right. If you listen to P, he'll tell you. Who? P stands for Peonon. You listen to a guy named Peon? No, don't be ridiculous. It's P-Anon. The Anon stands for Anonymous, because nobody knows who he is. Then why do you listen to him? We just know he's some government bigwig who wants the truth to come out. That's why he's called P. Right. The P stands for Private, which is the highest top secret government clearance. But isn't Private the lowest rank in the government? So? I fail to see the connection. You just need to watch the video. Oh, you have videos. Hours of them. Oh, boy. Don't be a sheep. Think for yourself. Yeah, just like the videos tell us. Exactly. You guys have no idea how ridiculous you sound. So, you're not going to loan us 50000 so we can get plutonium, man? Of course not. But you'll be helping all of mankind. Well, at least do the research and look it up for yourself. Fine, I'll look it up. Don't go to any of them liberal sites. You're supposed to do your own research using only pre-approved pan-on videos that enable you to think for yourself. Yeah, don't be a sheep. Like us. Yeah, like us. Whatever. Someone's here. Who is it? Better not be the government. I knew Sean was going to rat us out as soon as he heard about the ray gun. What? I, I did it. You, you, uh, forget it. Let me see who it is. Dude, where are we going to get nuclear radiation? I don't know. Maybe Libya? <laughs> Libya. <laughs> What's so funny? Man, I don't know anything about nuclear radiation, but I know women. And dude, Libya is part of the female anatomy. <laughs> Hola. 
We are gardeners. Da, we cut grass. The grass doesn't need to be cut. I already did it. How about a uh, housekeeper? Or cook? No thanks. I'm good. We must go now. Come, Bo. Eh, I mean, Carlos. Who's that? That's the next door neighbors. They're into role playing. They're Russian. Yeah, they've been here for years. They were here when Janice and I bought this place. We're over here talking about nuclear ray guns, and you didn't think it was important to mention there were Russians in the neighborhood? They're harmless. They're trouble. And nobody's making any ray guns. We are. I just need to find a way to control the nuclear radiation so we can fire it out of the gun, dude. What nuclear radiation? That's not the problem. The problem is we have Ruskies in the neighborhood. They were here long before you were. You just moved in, Tank. You gotta keep an eye on them. And Janice wonders why I don't have any friends. Did you see how this man stared at me, Boris? You're a pretty girl. Yet, that's not it. He's on to us. Then we should stay away from him. Yet, we must get closer, but stay cautious. Wouldn't it be safer to stay far away? We need more disguises. I can stay here. What? Yet, yet, focus, Boris. We are not going to confront him. We are just going to observe and report. There's no one to report to. We are sleeper cell, Boris. Have faith. They won't call us when they are ready. No one is going to call. You are a pessimist. I'm a communist. Americans are optimists. We need to fit in. We can go back to our negative ways when we return to Motherland. I don't want to go back. Why, Boris, what have the Americans done to you? Before we do anything with our nuclear ray gun, we have to deal with those Russians. What do you mean, deal with them? We need to find out who else is in the neighborhood. There might be some shape-shifting reptilian aliens, or maybe people from Andorra. We just don't know. What's Andorra? It's a small country in Europe that's been harboring Nazi war criminals and alien specimens for decades. Really? Wow, I didn't know that. That's because you hang out with Sean. I don't hang out with him, man. We need to find a way to get everybody in the neighborhood in one place. You want to shoot them with our ray gun? No, I just want to see who's here. This is it, Boris. This is what? There's going to be a neighborhood watch meeting. This is our chance to get a good look at soldiers. We don't need a neighborhood watch. You only watch the neighborhood. That's all you do. I am doing our job. You should be a little more serious. I suppose you want us to wear another disguise. Of course. Worst tank. I would think that a neighborhood watch would be right up his alley. He'll be here. What time is this thing supposed to start? I don't know. I don't have a watch. Okay, people, listen up. I apologize for being late. I had to do a perimeter check, and it took a lot longer than it should have. Did you know that there were four back enters in the parking lot here? I'm probably going to regret asking, but what's a backer enter? People who back into parking spaces end up causing log jams because everybody else has to wait for the self-centered son of a bitch to park. Put that away. In addition, terrorists like to park like that because it makes it easier for them to flee after they commit an attack. Whoa, dude. I knew I was going to regret it. Four of them parked like that in this parking lot here. Completely inexcusable. Now, who has been in charge of doing perimeter checks in this neighborhood? No. Oh, nobody wants to fess up, huh? Fine. I'm in charge now. There's going to be some changes around here. 
You people won't survive five minutes when the zombie aliens unleash their fury. You mean alien zombies. The what? The alien zombies. They're coming. In fact, they may even be in this room right now. First off, we need to have rotating night watches. If we can get 14 houses involved, that will mean your house will only have to do it once every other week. Hey, you people should listen up. Tank knows what he's talking about. He was in the special, special forces. Thanks, Tommy. Okay. I think we also need to install road spikes in the road. You know, the kind they have in parking garages to keep you from going in the out gate. What is that going to do? Do I have to spell it out for you people? Road spikes will keep all the bad guys from coming in. But won't that just keep us out? Look around. We're already here. We can hash out those details later. I have a more important matter to discuss. You folks may not know it, but there are spies in our neighborhood. Filthy, despicable beings who pretend to be on our side, but are actually working for the enemy. This man is a spy for the alien zombies. What? That's ridiculous. Come on, Tank. You can't just go around accusing people of something. You're right. That's why I have my handy I got counter right here. It will tell me if someone's contaminated from being in contact with the alien zombies. Hmm, doesn't seem to be working. Because he's not contaminated? No, that's not it. The damn thing is faulty. Don't worry, I have a backup counter in my other pocket. You have two Geiger counters? Don't worry, Sean, I have more at home. I'm out of here. I guess it's just the three of us. We'll go ahead and adjourn this meeting. I need to make some adjustments to my neighborhood instructions. Meeting adjourns. Good job. I think that went well. Now it's time for Tank's helpful survival tips. Hello, friends. My name's Tank, and I'm here to give you some helpful survival tips. And I'm Tommy. I don't have any helpful survival tips, but I do invent stuff. That's right. Now tell our viewers about your latest invention. Um, okay. Right now, I am working on a nuclear ray gun. And how's that coming? It's almost done. I just don't know where I'm going to find the nuclear radiation. Anyway, here's today's helpful hint. They say no taxation without representation, so when your representative gets sent to prison for taking bribes from Russian oligarchs, you don't have to pay any taxes. I don't pay taxes anyways. Neither do I, but some of our viewers might. Also, and this is important to remember, zombies cannot climb trees. Hey, they're just like bears. Bears can climb trees. They can. I didn't know that. You should put that down as another helpful hint in case there's a bear invasion. Well, that has been another edition of Tanks and Tommy's Helpful Survival Tips. It'll be cool if bears were like zombies and one bit you, you turn into a bear. I'd want to be a panda. Join us next time for more Tanks and Tommy's Helpful Survival Tips. Okay, where was I? You were teaching us survival techniques. Right. Now let's recap. What have we learned so far? Number one. Always be prepared. Yes, make sure you write it down. Gotta stay sharp and ready. Got it. Um, that, that's it. That's all we've covered so far. Good, good. Okay, lesson two. Always be aware of your surroundings. I've memorized the location of everything in this house. Everything? Yes, don't worry. I replaced the lettuce in that old plastic bag with some trail mix. Lettuce isn't a good snack when you're out on a mission and you get hungry. That wasn't lettuce, dude. Okay. Anyway, I've memorized everything in this house. Hey! Has anybody seen the salt? See? This is why it's important to memorize your surroundings. Let's see. The kitchen. Okay. 
sugar, cutlery, oven mitts. Why does your mom have so many oven mitts? Colander. There's a lizard? No, a colander. No, it's, it's one of those strainer things. Oh. Cheese grater, pepper. Okay, I can confidently say that this house is out of salt. Never mind. I found it. Okay, what other lessons you guys want to know? Why do you have all those brochures? Well, that goes back to lesson one. Always be prepared. What do brochures prepare you for? Currency. What? Yeah, money be useless after the alien zombie apocalypse, so I need something to barter with. But why brochures? I save everything. You never know what you'll need when the time comes. Yeah. Hey, are you guys excited about camping tomorrow? Oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you, man. I can't go. What? Why not? I have a job interview. Job interview? Why is this the first time I'm hearing about it? Why do you want a job? Better not be a government job. Are you going to be working for the man? No. Sean and Janice don't like me hanging out on the couch all day. You're not hanging out on the couch. You're helping me prepare for the alien zombie invasion. Yeah, I'll still do that, dude. I just need to do something to keep them off my back. What about you? Are you going to run off and get a job? No, I, I don't think so. Good, because I don't want to go on a camping trip with Sean by myself. He is worthless. Uh, why do I have to go? You have all the camping gear that you've never used. Yeah, but, but why do I have to go with him? Oh, it'll be good to bond with Zach. But can I bond with him without Tank? When is the last time you even went camping? I don't know. When was your cousin's wedding? 2012. Okay, well, it was about eight years before that. That's exactly why Tank needs to come. It'll probably take you all day to set up that tent. Come on. I'm sure I can Google how to set up a tent. You're going to wear that to your interview? Yeah, it looked pretty good, right? Sure, if you're going for a job as a fire hydrant. Or a skinny Santa Claus. Or a Coke bottle. Hey, looking good, brother. Thanks, dude. And Coke bottles aren't red, they're glass. You mean a Coke can, dude. Well, I better finish getting ready for my interview. Hey, looking good, Uncle Tommy. Thanks, dude. Hey, who's this? That's Mike, uh, Zach's friend. Well, I approve of his uniform, but I haven't vetted him yet. I need to do a background check to make sure he's okay. He's okay. Your name is Mike? Yes. No, that's no good. Mike is a stupid name. From now on, you're Sean Jr. What? Yeah, he looks like you. No, he doesn't. Okay, Sean Jr., where were you born? San Diego. California. Oh, no, 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 no. That's no good. Where do you live now? Right down the street. How old are you? Eleven. What do you do? What do you mean? What do you do? Do you have a job? My mom makes me load the dishwasher. Uh-huh. That seems respectable for an 11-year-old. Have you ever been to any foreign countries? Does Disneyland count? That depends. Did you go on, it's a small world? Yes. I'm sorry. I don't want any commies coming with us. Knock it off, Tank. Fine. There's just one more test. Okay, Sean Jr., stick your arms out. Like this? Okay, he's good. Can we go? I've been waiting for you. Okay, before anybody does anything, we have to do a perimeter check. A perimeter check? For what? You never know. That's why I need to check. It could be zombies or aliens or zombie aliens or maybe even people from Madagascar. 
That's why you always have to be ready. White people from Madagascar. Have you ever met anybody from Madagascar? No. Have you, Sean Jr.? No. Of course not. Nobody has. Isn't that suspicious? Nothing down here. So, Tommy, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, there's not much to tell. I'm an inventor. Uh-huh. Oh. Yeah, I've invented all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah, like what? Well, since you asked, right now I'm working on an alien death ray gun to shoot the alien zombies, but I'm having a hard time getting the necessary nuclear radiation. I see. Okay. Well, it says here that you're 24 years old. 24 and a half. Oh, okay. And um, what are some of your strengths? Well, I could totally make a bong out of almost anything. Well, I'm not sure how that can fit in here. Maybe a water pipe breaks or something and I can repair it using a can of Pringles or an apple or something. Okay, well, tell me about your weaknesses. Well, I don't have reliable transportation, so I often have to call out if I can't get a ride. Oh, and I was fired from my last job because I ate all the french fries. Yeah, um, employers don't usually like it when the employees eat all of their product, so we really want to be careful about that, huh? It like, totally wasn't my fault. I had the mind cheese. Okay, well, I think that's enough for today. Did I get the job? We'll let you know. Cool. I think that went well. Come on, Dad. Tell us a ghost story. Yeah, something scary. Well, I really don't know any. Perhaps Tank? Okay. When I was in the Army, my job was to find and exterminate radioactive zombie aliens. You see, in the 1970s, our country was in trouble. We were broke. The government didn't know what to do. Then extraterrestrial aliens arrived and promised us a bright future with complete energy independence. With the gas crisis going on, that seemed like a great deal. But the aliens wanted something in return. They said that they had too many people on their own planet and needed to relocate some of them here. We were worried that it would be too many people for us, so they promised to make them into other things as well. Like dogs, cats, hamsters, that sort of thing. So the aliens started arriving, and they all had suitcases. Now, nobody thought of anything of that. I mean, like, no big deal, you know. I mean, if you're going to another planet, you got to have luggage too, right? But in each suitcase was nuclear waste from their planet, and they were dumping it here. Also, when the aliens came, they weren't sending the best or their brightest. No, they were only sending us their losers who didn't contribute anything and just went on welfare. That's why I hate socialists. A lot of them are zombie aliens. Now, the reason the aliens became zombies is because there are things in our atmosphere that weren't in theirs and it slowly began to eat their brains and turn them into zombies. If you've ever seen homeless people shuffling down the street, it's probably a zombie alien. Don't shoot them, though, because sometimes they're just lazy liberals who mooch off the system. You're unemployed and live with your mother, right? Yeah, so? Okay, just checking. So is that why you carry a Geiger counter? You can never tell who's real, man. We lost a lot of good men in the alien wars. Are you guys scared yet? Not really. We wanted ghost stories, not alien stories. You want scary stories. Ghosts are harmless. They don't do anything except say boo. They can't even touch you. They try and they go right through. All they do is spy on you when you're sleeping or go to the bathroom or playing with yourself. Aliens and zombies. Now those are scary. Tell us another story. Okay. This is a true story about a small island where a billionaire businessman decided to build a theme park of dinosaurs. Like Jurassic Park? No. This is nothing like Jurassic Park. This was, uh, called Dinosaur Park. Boring. 
Tell us something better. Make it scary. Okay, this one's about a guy named Freddy Krueger who kills people when they're sleeping. That's Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, your parents let you watch that one? I have a TV in my room. Well, it's getting late. You better hit the hay. We got a busy day tomorrow. That's right, we're gonna hunt aliens. Hey, can we hunt aliens now? No, don't be silly. It's too dangerous at night. Okay, time for bed, everybody. Good night. I got the first watch. Don't worry, I'll keep us safe. Night. Ugh. Duck! Duck! I got the cool- Good job, Marty! Now we can fix the time machine! Make it so 2020 never happened! I call this one Surf and Turf. It's a good move to use against the aliens. They'll never see it coming. Good morning. Hey, Sean. Just showing the little warrior some good Taekwondo moves. I see that. We're going to go on a nature hike before breakfast. You want to come? Of course. I call this one the tank walk. You turn around to make sure you have enough room, and then you go backwards. Oh! What's wrong with you? There was a bee, man. Are you allergic? Yes. No, well, I don't know. I'm not taking any chances, man. Doesn't it seem like the bee would just sting your hand? That just shows how little you know about Taekwondo. I was creating air currents to draw the bees away from me. Geez, Dad. That's just basic TQD. Taekwondo. We have to leave a trail so we can easily find our way back. Like Hansel and Gretel. This is nothing like Hansel and Gretel. They got lost because they used breadcrumbs, which was stupid because birds and aliens eat breadcrumbs. No, I'm going to show you advanced techniques that the U.S. Army uses. Aliens eat breadcrumbs? They'll eat anything. You mark something with a piece of chalk. Trees and rocks worth good. See, now we do them every so often as we hike, and it'll be easy for us to find a way back. Can we go? I've been waiting for you. Hey, you get that tree. I'm going to get that rock over there.
I think this is a good place for a break. We ready to go back? I'm just waiting for you, man. Isn't it this way? City folk, I'm trained at this. Okay, you're leading the way. Hey, are you sure we're going the right way? Of course. Look, there's our chalk mark right there. There's one there also. Hey, look, here's one. Hey, I made this one. Uh-oh. Have we been going in circles? Looks like it. Wow. What about all of your army training? I was only in the army for uh, two weeks. Two weeks? Didn't you drive tanks? No, why would you think that? Your name is Tank. So, your name is Sean. What? <laughs> You're crying? Man up, we have to find a way out of here. So sorry. Crap, I'm stuck up here with three kids. Dad, we lost. We're all gonna die up here, man. My parents would be mad if I died up here. <laughs> No, we're fine. We'll just need to find a spot to get service. <laughs> Are you okay? We're all gonna die! Then we're going to the zombies! I don't want to be a zombie. There's no reception up here. Hey, there's a campsite. There you go, Sean Jr. passed the test. Test? What test? I was just testing you guys to see how you respond in a crisis. What? Yes, I faked a panic attack to see how you'd respond without any leadership, and you failed. Trying to find cell service? <laughs> the first thing the aliens would do is jam communications. You have to remain calm and find a way out. You didn't. I was testing you. Can we go home now? Hey, I'm just waiting on you. Janice, I'm telling you, he's a fraud. It couldn't have been that bad. It was horrible. He got us lost and then completely panicked. Tank panicked? <laughs> I don't believe that. He has no idea what he's doing. Did he set up your tent? Well, yeah, but, but that's only because the poles were tricky. And didn't you say he got the campfire going? I was busy trying to set up the tent. Mm-hmm. And he's the one who doesn't know what he's doing? He was just testing us, Dad. See? It was a test. No, I don't think so. It's good for you to have someone to hang out with. There are other neighbors. Who you've never met, even though we've been here for 10 years. 
Well, maybe it's time. Well, what about the Russian couple next door? You want me to hang out with them? I want you to hang out with somebody. Tank means well. You just need to loosen up. Have some fun every now and then. Fine, I admit, he is entertaining. Come on, what's the worst that could happen? Hey, you guys wanted to see me? Yes, we just want you to know that your cousin Oliver is going to be living with us. What? Not cousin Oliver, he smells. Yes, he does. But I decided... We decided. Right. Your mother and I decided that we need to make some changes around here. What? Yes. We looked at the numbers, and the viewers are beginning to lose interest. Already? But this is a movie. Yes, we just felt we needed to jazz things up to spark interest. That's not fair. Why is your dog named Tiger? I didn't name him. That was just the name he had. Can't you name him something else? Of course not. That would just confuse him. Hey guys, I made you some cookies. Cookies? Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Mrs. Perkins. You betcha. You kids have fun. Let me know if you need anything. That sure was nice of your mom to make us cookies. She does stuff like that all the time. Mrs. Brady never cooked for us. She didn't. No, she always had Alice do everything. Who's Alice? The housekeeper. You don't have a housekeeper. No, I have a mom. What did Mrs. Brady do if her housekeeper did everything? Hmm, I'm not really sure. I mean, besides yell at me for being in the way. She did. Sure. Everybody always complained that I was in the way. There were nine people and only two bathrooms. Everybody was in everyone's way. But I always got blamed for it because I was the new kid. Oh, that reminds me. What? Get out. Gotta stay sharp and ready. Whoa, dude. I think someone might have slipped some drugs into my drugs, man. What do you mean? There's a little green guy floating over your shoulder. You can see him? Of course I can see him. Nobody else can. Calm down, dum-dum. All can control who sees me and who doesn't. This is the Great Wise Zoo. He's here to help me fight the zombie aliens. I knew they were real. Of course they're real, dum-dum. Are you a zombie alien? Do I look like a zombie to you? I don't know. Never seen one before. Come to think of it, I've never seen an alien before either. I couldn't tell anybody about Wazoo because they'd think I was crazy. You are crazy, dum-dum. I'm just an added bonus to your craziness. Okay, so what's the plan? Our job is to stay sharp and ready. Wazoo will guide us. We need to keep an eye on the putts. Who's the putts? Oh, I know that dude. He's that cool greaser kid who's always saying, Oh! Oh yeah, i seen that guy. He always has a bunch of girls around him. Well, he's not a cool greaser kid. He's actually a shape-shifting zombie alien. What? Why else would he wear a leather jacket, even though it's 90 degrees? Come to think of it, I did notice that his hair is always perfect, even after he takes off his helmet. And I heard he only eats organic food. Yeah, that's definitely a zombie alien. You guys are dum-dums. Hey, Janice. Oh, hi, Tommy and Tank. What's up? You've lived here for a long time. Do you know that guy known as the Putts? The Putts? Oh, you mean Arthur. Who? Arthur Puzzarelli. Sure, I've known him for years. Why do you ask? What can you tell us about him? What do you mean? Oh, just normal stuff, like would he melt if he gets wet? What kind of effect does nuclear radiation have on him? If you chopped his head off, will he grow another one? You guys are weird. If you guys are curious about him, why don't you just ask him yourself? As if it would be that simple. Hey, why isn't it, dude? What? Why can't we just talk to him? Because it might be dangerous. He has that big event this weekend down at the beach. He does? Why wasn't I informed of this? I don't know. 
Do you want me to inform you every time someone in town does something? I thought that was a given. We should go to the beach this weekend. My thoughts exactly, amigo. Janice, who else is going to be there? Everybody. The whole town is going. The whole town? Of course! It's the movie's big everyone in town is going to the beach to move the plot forward event. Oh yeah, I've heard about that. Hola friends, it is I, Papa Chango, from Papa Chango's Authentic Mexican Restaurante. We are the only Mexican restaurante north of the border that can truly claim to be authentic. You no longer have to go to foreign country to get dysentery. Just drink our water. Montezuma's <coughs> revenge has never been easier. Have you ever been scared away by the D rating in our window? Don't be. I assure you that the D stands for delicioso. Are you worried about catching the COVID? No. I promise you that we will make our employees wash their hands after using their bond. We even put a sign up to remind them that's Papa Chongo's authentic Mexican restaurant. Please note that after 10 p.m. we only serve drunk American coeds and sailors. That's Papa Chongo's authentic Mexican restaurant. Adios, amigos! Red Hot Hot Dogs here. Red Hot Hot Dogs here. Hey, welcome to my hot dog stand. What can I do for you? Do you have hamburgers? No, we just have hot dogs. Well, what about cheeseburgers? I'm afraid not. Mmm, I know. How about a delicious tuna fish sandwich? Hold on, let me ask the chef. Bad news. He said we're all out of the tuna fish, but we do have, oh, I don't know, hot dogs. Hmm. Okay. I guess I'll take a hot dog. Good choice. Doc, Doc, I got a hot dog. Why, Marty? We already fixed the time machine. I know, but I was hungry. Do you have milkshakes? No. You could probably make a lot more money if you had milkshakes. I'll let the corporate office know. People like milkshakes. Hello, folks. This is Bruce Binkowski with my co-host, Anita Mandalay. And we're coming to you live from Chief Martin Brody Memorial Beach. Today, local legend Arthur Puzzarelli, better known as The Putz, will attempt the impossible. He is going to jump over a shark on his skateboard. This will certainly be a feat unlike anything the world has ever seen and can only be attempted by a superstar like Arthur Puzzarelli. That's right, Bruce. I asked the Putz earlier this week why he was going to jump the shark, and he said because people think it can't be done. And he's right. Usually it takes a TV show several seasons before they jump the shark, but he's going to be the first one to do it in a single movie. And on a skateboard. That's right, Bruce. On a skateboard. How does one go about jumping a shark on a skateboard? According to the experts I talked to, it can be done one of two ways. Either the shark has to be on land or uh, the skateboard has to be on water. Well, it looks like the putz is ready. Let's head down to the beach. Thanks, Bruce. I'm here live with some local residents to get their opinions on the putz's big stunt. Hello, folks. What are your names? Oh my god! Is this going to be on TV? I didn't do my hair. I'm Sean Perkins. And I'm Janice Perkins. And what are your thoughts on the Putz's big day? We think it's great. He's just going to do great. I want the shark to win. And why do you want the shark to win? Because this is all for show. Even if the Putz didn't make the jump, the shark still wouldn't eat him. Don't pay any attention to him. We don't want the shark to win. This shark is a man-eating shark. I know, but I just saw them feed him. So? Yes, so? So he's not going to be hungry. 
It's really not that dangerous to swim with a shark that just ate. Well, why don't you do it? Yeah, you should do it. I can't do it. I, I, I don't I don't have my bathing suit. Uh-huh. Well, this is Ann B. Dextrous down on the beach where most of the people are excited for the putts. Thanks, Ann. It looks like the putts is about ready to start his approach. That's right. It's all about how he hits the ramp. He also needs to be careful of the wind. One wrong move could push him right into the water. Which is where the shark is. Yes. Also, the water is very cold. He has a good approach to the ramp. Plenty of hang time. Everything looks great so far. There's the shark. It leaps higher and higher and... Oh, my God! The shark must have gone 25 to 30 feet out of the water and grabbed the putts. Wow, I, I guess the shark was hungry. Woo, dude, that did not go well. Oh, that's going to leave a mark. What? You think I was going to trust these dum-dums to get anything done? If you want something done right, you have to let the little green alien do it. This reminds me of Soviet Union. When everyone in village would gather around the TV and watch big chess match. And then the loser had to wrestle a bear. Oh, those were good old days. Well, this has been a very disappointing day at Chief Martin Brody Memorial Beach. For Andy Dextrous and Anita Mandalay, I'm Bruce Binkowski. Good night, everyone, and please drive safely. That was so cool. I had no idea sharks could jump that high. He might have had some help. I don't know how the city plans to top this next year. Or what we're going to do in a sequel. Sequel? Oh, I don't think there's going to be a sequel. Why not? We had to cut that scene where Tank's ex-girlfriend comes to town looking for him. Thank God, that girl is nuts. Hey, can I have a girlfriend in the sequel? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I know this is a movie, but we have to make it believable. Uh, I'm gonna do that scene where we all go to Disneyland. We can't use Disneyland, though. Oh yeah, that's right. We'll have to go to another amusement park that doesn't have an anthropomorphic mouse as a mascot. Action. So that was the movie. Uh, what do you guys think? What do I think? I'm a trained Shakespearean actor. I was an understudy for Polonius and Hamlet. I once played the bear, the Royal Shakespeare Company's production of A Winter's Tale. What do I think? I think this film is an insult to the theater. I thought it was entertaining. You, my boy, also think your cat barked at you. It wasn't at me. He was barking at another cat. Didn't you read the script before you accepted your part? Script? What script? The script was being written while we were filming. In fact, the script isn't even finished. None of us know how this movie's going to end. Whoa, maybe it never ends. But Tank, you have to admit you had a good time filming it, right? I'm only known as Tank while we are filming the movie. Off camera, I want to be known by my legal name, which is Sir Reginald Hemshaw III. You were knighted? No. Then why do you go by Sir? That's what the people call me. Hey, the people at Burger King call me sir. Does that mean I was knighted? You're even dumber in real life than that character you portray. Thanks, dude. I'm a method actor. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed watching the film as much as all of us, except Tank. Sir Reginald Himshaw III. Did making it. And I hope you check out the end of this film, which I am still writing. about me?
amigo. 